Hi, I'm functional health coach Vince Pitstick, and this is MMU Education. Hey, if you would like to support the channel and love this content, please like and subscribe, and then also hit that notification bell to be notified every time we make a video drop. Thanks. All right, so I'm not actually asking you to poison yourself to get well, but the point is actually very, very important. Uh, you're getting over inundated with all of these influencers and doctors and whoever the hell else you're listening to for your health advice, which seems to be Google statistically. But uh, it is very true that poison or things that are poisonous or have a toxic effect inside of our body actually make us healthier. That's right. Poison yourself to get well or poison yourself or vitality. That's the title I'm going to run with here because it really helps us understand so we don't get manipulated or confused. I think a great article that sums up what I'm trying to say uh, is you can take a look at this piece of literature here. Uh, it says, what doesn't kill you? And I love that because um, it's true. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Very similar in emotional stressors in your life, physical stressors in your life. You know, when you go work out, that's a stress and that makes your body stronger. You go through situations in life. It's a stressor. It makes your body stronger. In fact, if you don't have the stressors, you can't improve your life. And if you're not improving, you're going backwards. So the lack of stress actually would make you sick or early issues in vitality and longevity. So we need these things, right? In this article, it'll show you how metals, oh, metal, oh no, arsenic and cadmium and all iron. Oh my gosh, we shouldn't have these things in our body. We use these to make buildings or we use it in other products that we may consider harmful. But ironically, we need trace amounts of, of these metals inside of our bodies as they serve very, very important functions. It's only when they get in high amounts that it becomes poisonous or dangerous. So for example, here you can see how arsenic actually assists in breaking down thionine for gene slicing. And that's something that's very, very important inside the bodies. In fact, it's fundamental. This food has arsenic. Oh no, it has arsenic. Well, it depends, right? Because the dose dictates the poison. So yes, if you were to become exposed to a high amount of arsenic at any one time, the oxidative stress from that event could lead to cancers or other diseases, but in its small amount, in the right dose, it is actually essential for life. Let me expand this to something that's even more important. Things that you've been getting hit with uh, a lot on social media. I, I, I see the fear monitoring all the time where meats ha are bad, they have toxins, plants are bad, they have toxins, you know, everything now, you know, whether it's plastics or cooking food. And yes, all of these things should have general guidelines and things to look out for. But then when we focus and harness or over-focus on the bad part about it, and we don't talk about the counterbalancing positive effect about it, we're conveniently lying. It's like, it's like giving a statistic without context. It's scaring with the number and not explaining it in real life. This article talks about a toxic brew we can't live without, right? And it really looks at plants. And, you know, as someone who's worked with uh, diseases and athletes for over 18 years, I can tell you that it's true that different diets work for different people at different times. But there are some fundamental truths about life that are always true. And the one that describes poison is good for you is the principle of hormesis. Hormesis is the unique process that happens inside of your body that when a stressor hits it, it interacts with the microbiome, the microbiome shifts, releases, right, uh, organic acids, creates a hormetic shock to the body, meaning a hormonal response for the most part, and then all the cells of the body respond, right? So, for example, a little bit of poison like a metal or a plant toxin can interact with the microbiome leading to a large response of antioxidants. So we see this in ketogenic diets a lot. If you or maybe one of your family members or friends is struggling with some issue, maybe can't keep the weight off, or has been dealing with a health issue that nobody can help with, my team can help at Vital Coaching. Vital Coaching is a complete all-in-one solution to the world's problems. I believe that's why I've given my life to it. It's a place where you can get a medical team, your coach, you can get your diets, workouts, supplement protocols all in one place, uh, all with a huge app full of information, live trainings. 
We have a huge community and individualized support all in one membership. It's unlike any other company that's out there. It is a real all in one solution. So if you're interested in maybe a consult with me or my team, you can check us out at vitalcoaching.com or you can message me on Instagram at Vince underscore Pitstick. Hope to see you soon. Uh, ketogenic diets, when you switch to them, can create a lot of ROS, radical oxygen species. Same thing when you work out a lot, you're going to produce a lot of ROS. It's part of the process of making energy, fueling and cooling. So if I just took that piece out, I could go, ooh, did you know working out creates all kinds of radical oxygen species and free radical stress on the body? And then you go, oh, I shouldn't work out. I shouldn't move. I'm just going to sit in my chair and I'm not going to do anything. That's because again, I am I am actually lying because I'm conveniently only telling you one part of the story. Now, whether some of these people just aren't smart enough or wise enough to know the whole story and they're just sharing where they're at, or some people are doing it purposely to use your fear against you to make a purchase or influence your beliefs or behaviors, who knows? The fact is, for example, plants, plants do have toxins. Right, Plants have to defend themselves in different ways and they cannot move. The irony of this is though, those plants have adapted with your human body, or at least your body has adapted to those plants over tens of thousands of years. All right, And what happens from that is your body has actually learned to use that small little bit of poison or toxin to create a hormetic positive response inside of the body. So whether you're eating spinach or kale, maybe another video, we'll talk about the anti-nutrient when they talk about like oatmeal and, and other oxalates. I think that's an important topic as well. But what happens is it interacts with your microbiome, okay? It creates a short-term, we'll say poison or oxidative stress. That leads to an, a, a strong overreaction by the body in antioxidants and actually creates a very antioxidant state inside of your body. So that's why it's good to have a little bit of poison to create a lot of bit of vitality. So I'm sure maybe you heard about, you know, the dangers of eating canned tuna and potentially the aluminum or mercury that may build up, particularly mercury. It may build up inside of your body. Now, mercury doesn't necessarily have any benefits to the human body, although I would argue I think cells make antioxidants in response to these metals. Uh, there would need to be more research in this area. But what is what is known is that, for example, tuna, if I ate tuna, that would be really good for me. But if I ate five cans of tuna every single day for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, now maybe that particular mercury and the other toxins that may exist inside of tuna, now it might get to a dose or a bioaccumulation that is large enough to cause me to get ill, right? One particular pathway of toxin building up too long over time, now it's a poison. However, if I get a bunch of little poisons and they're never really all the same, and I don't consume them for too long, now I'm maximizing the ancient technology of the body to create antioxidant responses or create performance outcomes from these microtoxins or mini poisons that then create all these great effects. So that's why, yes, it's true. It's a good idea to hear about some of these things. I think I see a lot of times, for example, in vegans, when they eat way too many plants, way too fast, they're processed, they don't come with enough fiber, there's not enough balance to it. And those people will end up getting so many plant toxins at once it can create major, major issues in their stomach and maybe even autoimmunity and other issues, right? Very similarly, I see people eating the wrong kinds of like fried meats all the time. Well, see, that's, now that's something that, that people have done to meat that makes it carcinogenic or more carcinogenic. So you have, you'd be able to eat less of that than maybe like uh, free graze um, game style meat like, uh, like buffalo or elk and you cook it appropriately right? So there's not really a bad food. There's only bad things humans do to food. But the truth is there's a little bit of toxin or poison in everything. And if we learn how to harness it, we can actually increase our vitality and longevity rather than hurt it. So while everyone's teaching you what to fear, I'm going to teach you what to do. And what to do is harness the principle of hormesis, is to eat in variety. If you want to eat similar foods, do it for eight to 12 week stints. If you're working towards a goal, make sure you're throwing the weekends in that are different or 
rotating the foods every 12 weeks. Again, harnessing the power of all toxins instead of trying to eliminate all toxins. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching the video. And if you like this content and want to see more, check out any one of the other videos we have selected right here.